then from up here. Um, are there any, and, and is there a farm report? No, okay, well, we can all see, it's been amazing how the uh, bean fields have turned and the corn is, uh, yeah, everything's coming along. I saw on Facebook the Stewart Farm Complex did a post, uh, I think today, that the uh, yield is higher than they anticipated. Is that right, Dan? <laughs> Farmers never give that up. Oh, did he say? He said you have a higher yield than, than you expect. Oh, there's Skype. Yeah. This is all news to him. Don't be giving away the secret. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's on Facebook. You don't, you don't share your yields. It's all you know, competitive. All right. But God has certainly blessed us, I think, with a bountiful heart. Okay, uh, any announcements? Jerry? Bench breakfast Saturday morning, 9 o'clock in Yorkville. Okay. Lynette? <laughs> okay, Fall Fest is upon us. Um, I am asking for help for the day up of those of you that can volunteer. I'm going to pass this around. And instead of asking for food donations, we're trying something different. Because sometimes we got too many kinds of chips and different kinds of hot dogs, and so we're trying to mainstream it a little bit. Um, we're going to ask for monetary donations instead of bringing in the food. Um, but if you want to help, that's on here. I put the list of food that we're going to be buying on here. If you're interested in donating any proceeds for that, Heather or myself, um, you can talk to. And then if we have anything extra, it's going to go back to the company. Chris is planning. Chris Baker is planning on being here on the day of the event. He's also donating a couple of gift certificates to his shop, and he's going to draw a piece of artwork um, and have it framed. So that's kind of interesting. Wow. Yeah. So um, looking forward to seeing everybody. We're going to have we're going to have some fun and pumpkins and lots of all different kinds of things. Any questions on Fall Fest? October fifteenth, ten to one, and Deb has done a wonderful job, and Heather's done a wonderful job with the baskets. Take a look up there. There's lots and lots of baskets. October 15th on the calendar. Yep. All right. Very good. Anything else? Um, we'll have uh, sales for baskets, raffle after church today. If anybody's interested. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other announcements? Jan, I'm just going to ask a question. Since Carol and I have been kind of not getting uh, the ladies' lunch plan very well, if anybody has an idea and would like to do it, <laughs> just give a holler. There's nothing in the newsletter at this point, but um, it's not because we don't want to. Okay. Pardon? No. All right. Any ideas? Share them with Jan. Anything else? Welcome to God's house. Let us uh, worship God together by beginning with our call to worship. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Let us pray. God of our salvation, we thank you for the gift of faith. We thank you for all those who have taught us the good news. Kindle in us always this gift, this good treasure, that we may live the life to which you have called us according to your purpose and grace. We pray in the name of the one who abolished death and brought life to life through the gospel of our Savior, Christ Jesus. Amen. Now, oh, let us pass the peace of Christ. Um, I won't shake hands with anybody. I'm getting over a plug. So, but all of you, welcome each other. Cheers. Peace of Christ.
a number of questions. You can all come up with the answers. How many are in your family? Three. Four. How many? Four. Five. 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 Two. Five. Two. Five. Two. Five. Two. Three. Four. Four. How many in your family? Four. Four. How many? Four. 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 How many are in your family? <laughs> Thank you. 
and self-discipline. Therefore, relying on the love and grace which was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, we courageously now confess our sins together. Holy and righteous God, amidst the violence and wrongdoing of the world, we struggle to live by faith. We treat suffering with contempt, seek power to serve ourselves, and cowardly shrink from prophetic truth. Gather us again to your table as you gathered the generations before us. Save us from the strife we start and the contention we create. Rekindle within us the gifts you have given. Revive our sense of your Holy Spirit. In the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, but it has now been revealed through the appearance of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. We have died to sin in him, so let us live as people free by grace for faith. Amen.
1 through 14. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, for the sake of the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did, when I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure it lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is waiting within you through the laying on, our, on my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Do not be ashamed then of the testimony about our Lord, or of me, his prisoner. But join with me in suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God, who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior Jesus of Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. For the gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher, and for this reason, I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed, for I know the one in whom I have put my trust, and I am sure that he is able to guard until that day what I have entrusted to him. Hold to the standard of sound teaching that you have heard from me, in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard the good treasure entrusted to you with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's follow our guests. Our dear Lord, we thank you so much for the gift of your holy word. And we pray now, Lord, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, the word read might become the word lived. Amen. So I did introduce myself. I am Lori Walker, and I grew up in this church. I don't know all of you now, though. Uh, my attendance used to be good. I think some of you would say at least my attendance used to be good. Yes? Yeah, but now it's, okay, it's bad, right? And it's because uh, I am busy covering pulpits in other churches. Um, just so you know and you pray for, in Blackhawk Presbytery there are 68 churches and 21 of them don't have a regular pastor. So thus my attendance will continue to be a rather spotty. And because of this, I missed a very important Sunday in August, August 14th. I missed it. And it was when my great, great niece was baptized. Let me tell you why this matters. Uh, when I read the reading this morning, Paul wrote to Timothy, quote, describing Timothy's faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I'm sure lives in you. Now, it's not often, if you've noticed, ladies, that we talk about women in the Bible, is it? We talk a lot about the patriarchs uh, to the expense of the matriarchs. So, back to that Sunday in August. If you will please indulge me, I, I'll share with you the story of why that was so important. My great-great-niece, Emmy, was baptized on that day. And you may have noticed if you were here, she was in a baptismal gown that like hung all the way to her mom's knees. Well, let me give you the background of that. And it all happened in this church. Well, this church in name. Actually, it started in the old white church that you'll see a picture of in the back now. That's right. That's when that gown was new. You see, my grandmother, Dora, had her uh, daughter, Elaine, baptized in it in the 1920s. Then my mother, Elaine, had her daughter, my sister, Sue, baptized in it in the 1940s. And then my sister Sue had my niece Pam baptized in it in the 1960s. And then my niece Pam had her 
uh, my great niece Morgan, her daughter, baptized in it in the 1990s. And now my great niece Morgan had my great great niece Emmy baptized in August. All in the same dress, all in this church. Five generations in the dress, six generations if you count my grandma Dora, all members, all baptized here. Isn't that kind of cool? Now, I know some of you relatives out there know there's other people that are baptized in that dress, to include me. But, you know, I have three sons, so I can't do that matriarch thing. So, but all women. I just thought that that was something. But I was at an anniversary committee this year. Even with that, they remind me that my family is, is new <laughs> because we're not part of the founding generations of this church. So, we're not, that's okay. You all have your faith passed on. And how does faith get passed on from generation to generation? Really, how does that work? Don't we want to make that work? I think Psalms help to tell us that. David was writing this when he was old, and he was sharing his wisdom in the pattern of a song. And each of the lines of the songs began with a different letter of the Hebrew al alphabet, right? So that would help generations remember it so that they could share it. Briefly, that psalm said, commit your life to God. Trust God and do good. Don't worry about evildoers. God will take care of them. Anger doesn't help. Be patient and God will act to bring justice. It reminds me of faith wisdom shared by the women in my family. I remember my mom had me memorize Psalm 100. I remember my sister Sue passing down. She just boiled it down to let go and let God and shared that with her children. Think of your faith ancestors. What did they pass on to you? How did they pass their faith on to you? Now, faith ancestors do not need to be related by blood. Think of the many matriarchs and patriarchs that you have known. I think of them in this church. And of course, I didn't even picture them in the pews. My Sunday school teachers, and how they taught us all the songs that are still in my memory. And, and about the Bible verses, we memorized it back when that was a thing, right? While it used to be that everyone in this church seemed to be related, related by birth, that is, that is no longer true. And I'm really glad for it, really. Although I am a little frustrated that I haven't kept up with all of your names. But... As I go around covering other pulpits, um, I find that I appreciate this church all the more because many of the churches are shrinking and they don't have children in attendance. It makes me think a lot about what it takes to have a thriving congregation. Pastor Jenny printed on the front of the bulletin uh, one of our uh, mission statements that we used to have focus on and it came back to me. God's growing family, participating and connecting with one another by God's love. The key to that was that idea of family. And I remember when we brainstormed that mission statement, we knew that one thing that we loved about our church was the closeness of family that we all grew up valuing family, and again, not just birth family, but we valued our closeness as a church family and a multi-generational family at that. You see, our Christian faith is relational. It is made up of spiritual family relationships. We think of our God as our Father. Our Holy Spirit, like a mother, with the feminine qualities of God. And did you know the original Hebrew word for Holy Spirit required a feminine pronoun, she? 
and we think of Jesus Christ, <coughs> God's Son, as our brother. In baptism, we all become part of God's family. And in Christ, we are all siblings, brothers and sisters in Christ. God's growing family, participating and connecting with one another, nourished by his love. God calls us into relationship. And if we have not found our spiritual family, we live, I think, with some kind of longing or emptiness inside of us. John and I just met with friends, and in our sharing, uh, the husband shared how, oh, he had been on this search for his birth father. Now, he had good adoptive parents, and life had been good, but now he just had that longing and that emptiness to find his father. I think it's the same way with us finding our spiritual father, our spiritual family. We have a longing. And I don't think any of you would choose to be part of this church unless you felt brought in and a part of this us Sable Grove family. The challenge is, how can we be family? Not just to each other, but how can we be family to others? How can we keep our family growing, passing down our faith to all generations? Paul models it, I think, in his letter to Timothy. He treats Timothy as his own child. He says to Timothy, my beloved child. Isn't that a great thing about church? We can see all these children, and they are kind of like our own, right? We can smile, and we can take pride in them. Paul says, I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did. Whatever number of churches you or your ancestors have attended, the bottom line is you are continuing to worship as generations have done all the way back to Christ. Paul goes on. I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. Isn't that another great thing about being part of a church family? We share our joys. We share our concerns. We pray for each other. And we feel lifted in prayer. Paul describes Timothy's faith as sincere. A faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice and now I'm sure lives in you. Have you ever wondered what your life would be like if you had not grown up around people of faith? And now, imagine the life of those around you if you fail to pass that faith on to them, passing that for faith forward to future generations. That brings us to the heart of Paul's letter to Timothy and that letter that is written to us as well. I read it to you now in part from the message translation. So don't be embarrassed to speak up for our master or for me. We can only keep on going, after all, by the power of God who first saved us and then called us to this holy work. We had nothing to do with it. It was all his idea, a gift prepared for us in Jesus long before we knew anything about it. But we know it now. Since the appearance of our Savior, nothing could be plainer. Death defeated. Life vindicated. In a steady blaze of light all through the work of Jesus. So keep at your work, this faith and love rooted in Christ, 
exactly as I set it out for you. It's as sound as the day you first heard it from me. Guard this precious thing placed in your custody by the Holy Spirit who works in us. Our faith. Our faith is our most precious possession. It is the most important inheritance we have. As members of this church family, with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us, we need to reach out to our lost relatives, our brothers and sisters of Christ, and share the inheritance and invite them to join our family, a family of faith rooted in Christ. Amen. Received 
gifts from our faithful God, let us faithfully place those very gifts in God's service.
you might be with his doctors as well. And that he might experience your healing. And Lord, we pray for David as he is in the hospital and receiving transfusions that we pray might work, that they might solve the mystery of his internal bleeding. And Lord, we pray that you might be with Carol, that you might hold them both up, that their faith might be strong, and that they might find their hope in you. And Lord, we pray this coming week that you might be with Francie as she receives the results of tests. Lord, again, give her doctor's wisdom and may her test results give her peace. And Lord, we praise you that this past week Doug received the results of his test and that they are okay. Lord, we celebrate our joys together as well. We are so thankful that Linda's house in Florida was spared. We are so excited and thankful for hearing that Christine is engaged to Steve. We pray for their bright future. And Lord, we are thankful too for the bell ringers and the performances they give as they are clearly filled with your spirit. And Lord, we pray for all the other things that we hold so dearly in our hearts. We pray for your church so in need of healing, reconciliation, and transformation. Rekindle in us the sincere faith of Christ and make us willing and faithful servants in unmerited grace, in startling new mercy. You choose to call us and entrust us with sharing the faith and love of Jesus Christ, the same Christ who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And let us stand for our closing gift. We are the family of God. <laughs>
you leave this place, may the grace of God kindle in you the spirit of power, the spirit of love, the spirit of self-discipline. And now, siblings in Christ, beloved of God, may the grace, mercy, and peace of God the Father and of Jesus Christ keep you in that love and peace and mercy in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.